Hi, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is Heidi Manhart. I'm a technology support teacher with the Waterloo Region District School Board and this tutorial is going to walk through how to use a Google Form, Documents and Sheet as well as a number of scripts, Autocrat, Doc Appender and Form Ranger in order to create um, a tracking tool that uses just one form and one sheet and individual student documents for all of your assessment, whether it is formative or summative, um, whether it's reading, writing, math, science, it doesn't matter. Um, so many of you have probably used forms for assessing um, and tracking your assessments and each time you go to do something new you have to create a new form which goes to a new sheet. This is hopefully going to solve that. You don't have to have multiple places to go to um, but instead just have one. So what this looks like is that your rubrics are in individual sheets. Using something called Form Ranger, it's going to feed into a, a form and then using Doc Appender, the information or those responses will go to individual student sheets as well as the natural uh, connection to the overall sheet. If you went to a form traditionally that you might be using for assessment, um, these might be some of the questions that you have. So what strand or subject area am I looking at? What was the actual task? And then you have your criteria. So the big idea here is that you do not specify uh, the criteria within the actual question title. We're going to leave it generic because then each time you go to use this form for something different what you're going to change are the options such that when it goes to your sheet you will see here that there are um, it's the same form feeding all of this data but initially we used it for a writing task and we were looking at ideas organization and conventions then we looked at um, website construction and our options then changed to looking at design and content um, when we were doing a debate we were looking at oral uh, criteria and skills so each time the same form is being used your overall headings do not change but the content within does and at the student level, um, it's coming in either in, in a uh, table where you've got your ideas across the top or can come in as individual tables as well. And these you can see are different learning tasks and not all the time do you have to use all of the ideas um, that you've set up. They can be, they can be different. Um, when you have a sheet like this though, the benefit is I could sort by a student and see all of their all of their work um, in one sum in one summary uh, location, and yes, I could also see that here, but because of the way that it's portrayed, it's harder for me to look at it from a summative standpoint. Whereas um, in this point, I could further uh, filter if I wanted and look at only uh, the student's reading comments in order to then report. So it's quite powerful what you can do, what you can do with this. So if we uh, come back to our overall, um, what a couple of things that you're going to need to do is you will need to create the student documents first of all. Uh, the blank student documents and this is a link to the uh, tutorial on how to use Autocrat um, and I'll put that link both in the comments and on the um, I'll annotate this video later to show you that uh, in addition there is a video tutorial to walk you through how to set up the rubrics in a sheet because to use Form Ranger, uh, they do have to be uh, formatted specifically to have your levels changing by rows and your criteria by columns. And this link here will take you to, um, excuse me, to, to the uh, tutorial that will show you how to do that. So we're going to get really ready now. Um, so this is kind of an overview of what we're going to build. We're going to assume that our rubrics are already created and we're going to assume that the student documents are already created and what we're going to concentrate on today is building the form that will go into the uh, the sheet and using Form Ranger how these rubrics will be accessed. So if we have a form 
I'm not going to start right from scratch. You can stop the video here if you like and you can create the same questions that I have. But basically you'll need a question for student name, uh, for your subject or strand, for your learning activity, and then I would suggest making maybe six questions that are generic in nature where these are your success criteria. Um, and so depending on what it is that you'll be assessing, you would have up to six spots um, to enter uh, criteria into. You may sometimes only use two or three of them. Sometimes you may need, might need seven. Um, the reason why I like to have six is because then for our uh, workflow, you can decide how many you want to append to the um, to the student doc, but your response sheet doesn't need to change uh, because it will have all of the columns necessary. These criteria though, you will need to format them to be multiple choice or um, check boxes or drop down. Um, they cannot be short answer or paragraph in order for a form ranger to work. So it must be one of these three. Um, so I'm going to leave that back at multiple choice. And then your final two questions that you might want to put in are comments and next steps. And I always make this required because I do want to give my uh, students feedback uh, that is specific to, the, to, to them. Um, and then the last option is a student reflection space. This will actually never be filled out by me or, your, or yourself. The intention of this is that um, there is space appended to the student document. So if we look at that example of, um, of Alice, where she can go in and she can uh, reflect on the feedback that she's been given on the document. Okay. So, going back to our form, if we have all of the questions here, what we need to do in order to um, append our student names is open Doc Appender. And if you don't have Doc Appender, you will need to uh, download it. Uh, so, we'll open the sidebar. I've already chosen the folder because just today. Um, it seems to uh, have a few glitches, which I'm really hoping that they're going to fix very shortly, but um, it's not allowing me to choose a folder, so I had to create. Long story short, I have a folder with documents in it, and that's what you need. So when I um, first open this, if I click select question, I want it to populate my student name, and then I can click save and populate and cross your fingers, awesome. All of my student files that were in that folder have now been listed here. So then I can click next and step three is going to ask what do I want to append to their document. I don't need student name because their name is on the document. A timestamp is also not relevant to me but I do want the subject, the learning area and I'm going to append for this um, example uh, three criteria. I'm going to do the next steps and student reflection. I would like it to be formatted in separate vertical tables. This is something you'll play with and decide how you want to view it. I, I tend to like it this way. And then I'm going to enable it. Sometimes Doc Appender stops working. If you notice that it stops working, open it in the edit format, disable, and then enable again. It's like turning it on and off. So we can close Doc Appender. Our student names have all been listed. Now we want to populate our success criteria for the task that we're going to be um, looking at and the subject. So at this point, what I'm going to do is come up, and again, you're going to need a different add-on and this one is called Form Ranger. And if you're not sure where the add-ons are, they are uh, over here in the vertical ellipses. If you go to add-ons, it will open up your add-on store and you can type in uh, Form Ranger and it will be listed there and instead of manage it'll say add and then you just click allow um, and it will populate this um, puzzle piece. So we're going to use Form Ranger and what Form Ranger is going to allow us to do is to find uh, sheets in our drive with information to populate our form. So right now my form has some math strands in it and I want to change this because I'm going to be looking at uh, language. So I want to still populate this from a value list but instead of math strands I have a language strands list here. So I'm going to choose that um, and it's going to automatically in a moment change those strands from math to reading. Now what it's actually doing is picking a different column in a sheet um, that I've specified 
in the background uh, and, and told it to, to pick in um, that column. So to show you from scratch how that's set up, if I go to criteria number one and I say populate from a values list and I'm going to say new values list, I'm going to find the rubric that I would like. happens to be writing and I would like to look at sentence fluency. It will then pick up the sentence fluency column and I'm going to call this sent fluency and save and populate and criteria number one will now be populated with sentence fluency. Criteria number two I come back to form ranger I choose criteria number two. I say populate from a values list. Um, I can choose one that I already have here or again I can say new values list. I'm going to look for rubrics. I'm going to pick a different sheet this time. And on this sheet I have a number of different um, uh, excuse me rubrics. And under fiction I'm going to go to conventions and I'm going to populate that one. So I've got sentence fluency, convention, conventions, and then for criteria three, populate from a list. I'm going to choose a list I already have in place and I'm going to pick organization. As soon as I do that it will populate over here and there are my organization um, choices. So for this one remember that when we did doc append or I did not append four, five, and six so I'm actually not going to have those criteria. I only have these three um, and my comments is uh, an open-ended paragraph. I would like my questions to refresh or auto populate on form submit. So what that means is if for any reason any of these options need to change while I'm in the midst of assessing, I can do so at the original sheet and it will automatically update my form. Pretty sweet. So I'm going to close that because everything is now ready to rock and roll. Um, what I'm going to do finally is go to the responses and set up the response sheet. It's going to create the response sheet. So all of the questions are now headers across the top of my sheet and it's ready to receive information. So if we go to the preview of the form and do a, um, a response, let's say Harry was writing his magic potion and we'll give him a three for sentence fluency, uh, he could use some help in conventions, um, but his organization is great. We don't answer four, five, and six, um, and overall we can say that um, please refer to the dictionary, let's say the online dictionary, and grammar helper tools. We could call we're not going to fill in student reflection because that's for the student to complete. So when we put that information in we can reset our form to start again um, but that information will momentarily come into our sheet and at the same time um, we'll be able to see it also in our drive on the student's sheet. So if we go back to the drive we could search for Harry Potter to find Harry's document. We'll just make sure we get the right one. So we want this one here and there it is there. So now we have Harry's response. He also gets this information um, and he can come in and write a student reflection. So now what I want to show you though is how quickly it is um, and easy it is to change your form to something completely different. So we were doing a language assessment and now we want to switch it to something completely different. So we're going to go in and again we're going to run Form Ranger.
we're going to change the uh, subject and strand first. So once it loads, and sometimes these scripts do take a bit of time to load. It's nothing to worry about. It uh, depends on your Wi-Fi and things. So we're going to change it from language to math. Because it was already set up, it knew what sheet to go to. It just has to find the column, and it's populated. We're going to change our criteria, number one, because we no longer need um, reading. So now I don't have any of the math ones here yet, so I have to create a new values list. And in doing that, it's going to ask me where it is. So we're going to look for a math problem-solving rubric. It's going to the problem-solving sheet, and it's saying, do you want thinking? And populate and call this thinking. Criteria number two, new value list. communication. So you can see now criteria 1 and 2 have both changed and we are now going to go to criteria number 3. If I wanted this time a criteria number 4 I could also do that and um, open that up and say populate from a list and possibly this time let's just say I'm going to do something on organization of the thought as well I could pull this in even though it was from a language um, uh, a language rubric uh, possibly I'm you know they're having to write uh, quite a bit about what they're thinking is and so I'm also going to uh, try and pull in some assessment of organization so you saw how easy that was I'm going to leave five and six um, and comments when I have added, however, another uh, criteria, I do need to reopen Doc Appender um, because right now we were only appending one to three, and I now need to also append number four. Um, it doesn't recognize immediately that I was doing that. I do need to save and populate again, even though nothing has changed. And then in step three, when my list comes up, I am going to also um, select number four and save those changes. So then if we quickly do another test, and I'll do it again for Harry, and this time we'll say it was number sense. And if I were uh, doing a whole class set of these, I would actually type this learning activity in my edit uh, view and put it in as a multiple choice selection so that I don't have to retype it each and every time. So this time, um, Harry is just doing fantastic and he's got level fours and everything um, and so you know keep on doing everything so well <laughs> please don't assess my pedagogical comment here because it's not very pedagogical uh, and we could submit and it would reset in our um, sheet you can see that it came in and hopefully drum roll please it will also show up yay in his document and you'll see now that there are four criteria this time instead of three and again I can move this over so that we can see everything um, clearly so as you saw that occurred within um, moments that we were able to change this it all goes into our um, spreadsheet overall and into the student stock and um, so that's the fabulous piece of how this whole workflow comes together and you can use one form for all your rubrics using um, form ranger all of that student data is going into one sheet um, and then into student specific documents which they have access to also reflect on happy assessing with this awesome tool that is so easy to change and modify where all your data is in one awesome place